What's going on, everybody? It's Kelly in the hotel. Got the truck at the Brugner's. They already started working on it. So I'm going to give them a little bit more time before I start calling them, asking them if they have any kind of update. Because, you know, they got to drop the transmission and they got to they got to take the TECU off the top of the transmission and you know, inspect everything and trouble, test the TECU and uh, so I've been wanting to call call the service manager and and talk to him, but I'm I'm holding off. I'm waiting. I'm gonna wait till after. I'm gonna wait till about noon to uh, give him a call. But uh, let me share with y'all what the estimate is right as of right now. This estimate covers the uh, initial initial diagnostic uh, fee, which that diagnostic, uh, the troubleshooting on that diagnostic led to to uh, having to drop the transmission to inspect and test. So th this uh, estimate covers that initial diagnostic fee. It covers the, the labor for dropping the transmission, changing the rear main seal, and uh, also the reinstallation of the, uh, the transmission. But I'm probably gonna end up needing to uh, replace the ribbon harness and the clutch and uh, you know, maybe something else. I don't know yet. That's the reason why I've kind of been anxious to, to call that guy back to fix, uh, figuring out what what actually needs to be done and, and what the uh, the parts availability is and all that. But anyhow, let me share with y'all what, what this uh, estimate looks like. I'm at Brugner's in Volvo. I, actually, right outside of... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm at Brugner's Volvo in Abilene. Actually, right outside of Abilene in a little town called Tyre. But 350 for the uh, initial diagnostic, and then the labor and the uh, parts for removal of the transmission, and the troubleshooting, and the reinstallation of the uh, uh, the well the the rear main seal, and it also covers. This also covers the, re the reinstallation of the transmission. So right now I'm sitting at 3,200. Y'all see that? December 2022, 3,200 for that. So like I said, probably gonna have to need to, probably, I mean, I mean, I'm thinking right now. It's I'm 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 not gonna put it back together without changing the ribbon harness because every that's what everybody's saying that they did that that the problem most likely is. And also, I'm not going to the, the transmission's already dropped. Might as well put a new clutch in there too because I uh I ran I I did the clutch test with Pete uh, with uh, Premium Tech Tool. And uh, from my interpretation of the test, I, I, it showed that my clutch was about 50%. And I talked to the tech yesterday, he said the same thing. I asked him if he had did the test and he said yes. And I said, well, well what did you figure my clutch life was? And he said about 50%. So I guess I had ran that test the correct way and interpreted it right. But anyhow, um, Yeah, I'm in and out drinking coffee. Read the word. 
and I'm in and out the room, going over there to them stairs, doing some pull-ups, you know. That's what's going on. I'm finally glad to be addressing this issue. I got right now. I got over over five thousand miles driving, dealing with this problem. You know, so God help me out, man. We was able to manage the situation and, and, and to where to where we was able to get to a point to where we could run some loads and and make a little money to help cover the cost because we wasn't in a we wasn't in a, in a very good position when this first happened when the, when this problem first came up you know it was insurance renewal time and you know but we was able to manage the situation and, and get to a point to where to where get to where we are right now to where we can you know stack a little money have a little money to pay for the repair and uh you know that kind of thing we didn't have to we didn't have to uh in, we didn't we didn't have to get the truck towed there was one time where i thought i was gonna have to get the truck towed you know that first time it really kind of stalled on me I thought it was over with then. I thought I was going to have to get the truck towed. But I shut it off and waited for a minute. And then, uh, I actually waited for about 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 30. And I was blocking the TA. I was just pulling up. I was just pulling, about to pull into the TA, and I got halfway into the parking lot. And I was going up this hill and I didn't have a lot of momentum because I had been stopped. And it, 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 that's right there whenever it, the throttle decided to go dead on me and I had to stop, prevent myself from rolling backwards back into, it, back into the, 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 the traffic of where the light was right there, that, that TA in Rockwall. And I was like that for a minute, like I said, for a couple of minutes. And I thought I was going to have to get the truck towed in. I thought it was over with. But uh, got any got the truck moved. Anyhow, after that, I ended up going going to East Texas, coming back to Dallas, shoot, running around Dallas, going to Oklahoma, going going to San Antonio, going to Houston, coming back to Dallas, running around Dallas, going to Waco, coming to Abilene. Here I am in Abilene. I, you know what I mean? So after after that, I, I was able to, I, like I said, I got. I, I now I know the problem. I was I was able once I, I was able to to recognize kind of like how it would start acting and and just I was just after so much so many miles of, you know driving with that problem, I was able to kind of manage it. And I was always looking for a shoulder. Always looking for a place where, where you know, as soon as I felt that I was going, that I was started coasting and my throttle went dead, I put my hazardous lights on. And I wouldn't get all, I wouldn't get into the shoulder unless I thought I, unless I slowed down to the point to where it was unsafe. But most of the time, I'd be going about 65, 68 miles an hour on the freeway, and uh, I feel my throttle go dead. I look down at, at the uh, the dash, and I, it shows I'm still in 12th gear, but the throttle's dead, and I don't know if I believe that I was in 12th gear, or if I, I might have really been in neutral or what. But it said 12th gear, you know. But it, my throttle would just go dead, and like I said, I'll be going about 65, 68, then it go dead, and I just start coasting as soon as it would happen i put my hazardous lights on and start letting people know in the, in the behind me hey don't hang out back there go on and get around but i didn't up coasting about to about 50 miles per hour and then right whenever i got to about 50 then it would uh it would just come back to life throttle start working again and pick back up and it might drive 
you know, 150 more miles before it does it again. But then also there was times, there was days whenever it might do it back to back, back to back, you know? And, uh, you know, like running around in Texas, you, you have pretty much flat ground. You know, you can kind of manage, you can kind of manage that. Even, even here is, it's not, a, it's not good, but you can kind of manage the, uh, that kind of situation, that scenario, especially if you got a shoulder, you know, but it still makes it difficult because you lots of times there's constru construction zones. You ain't got no shoulder like that little stretch leaving Seguin on I-10 going to Houston or, uh, you know, just, you know, wherever there's lots of different places to where, to where it could be not, not a good spot, not a good spot, man. Especially if it decides to do it while you're going up a hill, you ain't got no momentum. If you're going up that hill, well, you do until you just, until you lose it. And uh, that's what happened to me one time over there near Hammond, uh, Louisiana. There was a, a real steep bridge going over the Mississippi River. And it was, I was in a lot, of, it was a lot of traffic, bumper to bumper traffic going over that bridge. And I was thinking to myself, man, I hope it don't do it right here. And then it did it. <laughs> and I stopped, I had to stop right there and uh I, ha I had to stop right there and put you know put my hazardous lights on stop right there blocking traffic traffic going around me you know everything people on the cb talking about man they don't know how to get it in gear they thought i had a standard or something shit if it was a standard i know how to put it in gear man i've shoot anyhow uh But yeah, I had, I had, I had the, the road service crew come up on, come up behind me in park, and he came up and said, "What's the matter, man? You can't get in the gear." And I just let, and I, I, I didn't even try explaining too much to him, either, because I didn't want him thinking I had like a, 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 you know, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get in gear. I'm gonna get in gear." And he just, well, all right then. Hey, he said, "We'll call a tow truck if you need to." And he said it kind of funny, like he was joking, like as if I couldn't get it in gear. And I was just like, ha, ha yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, um, I ended up, I ended up getting it up that bridge, getting it up that hill, going over the Mississippi River. And then I, then I stopped. I, I ended up stopping at uh, Old River, uh, Old River, Volvo. I think it's in Bow Bridge. I think that's how you say that name, name, but. I, I rode up in there in closing time. Me and this other guy rode up. I was rode up behind him. And uh, he died right there on the spot as soon as he got there. And, you know, I, I, wasn't in too, I wasn't in much better condition than him either. And it was closing time, though. And, but they, they hooked up Tech Tool, checked him out, uh, sent him on his way, and said, you might be able to make it. You might be able to make it home. You might not. So he, he took off and, and he gave it, you know, I don't know what happened to him, but then they did the same thing. They hooked up tech to him. They said, well, this is most likely what, you know, you're going to have to do, man. So uh, they said, first thing you need to do is you need to fix your wiring harness. You got oil coming up to your ECU, this and that. And at that time, I was thinking, me and my sister was thinking, man, maybe, maybe this is all because of oil at the ECU. You know, maybe it's all because of this oil. And uh, you know, then then there was a, there was there was pro there was you know veteran veteran pros on on Volvo Truck Masters. That's a good group right there on, on Facebook. Volvo Truck Masters, man. If you own a Volvo, shoot, you need to go join Volvo Truck Masters, man. It's better than Google. I don't ever Google nothing about Volvo anymore. I always go to that page, Volvo Truck Masters, and do my search there. But anyhow, uh, at that time, we were thinking maybe it was still, maybe the reason why this was doing this is because there's oil in, the, in the, the engine harness making its way up to ECU. Well, 
we fixed that problem. We changed out the oil pressure sensor and put non-wicking uh, 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 pigtail. And I don't got no more oil at the ECU no more. It's still doing it. So, anyhow, uh, I'm going to let y'all know how this goes, man. But that's the nature of this. And no codes on the dash. No codes on the dash. I do got inactive codes for range engagement. But no active codes, no active codes on the dash. I do got inactive codes for range engagement. Uh, so, anyhow, y'all, I'm gonna cut this video for now.